with us. Since the beginning, the freedom that He gives us to choose, the freedom that He gives us to obey Him. And I think that this is the beauty of uh, walking with God. This is the beauty of the life of faith, that it is a life of choice. It's a life where we choose to follow God and remain in His blessings and we disobey Him and we are overcome by curses. And the greatest of all curses is death. Huh? And the Bible says that Satan the serpent, the devil, deceived man, Adam and Eve, and he said to them, God is a liar. God did not mean that you do not eat from the fruit or from the tree of the good of knowledge and evil. He said to them, God is keeping something away from you. God is not telling you the truth. God knows that the day that you eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, you will become like Him. You will know good and evil. He said, if you want, try it. But you know what? Huh? Who? Oh. If you want to try it, no, no, that's my part of it. <laughs> you can see that I'm not reading from the Bible. I'm telling you, I'm telling you the story. And we all know it very well. No? Yeah. But the persuasion huh, of the devil to doubt what God has said, which is very simple. How many of us know that the Bible is simple and clear? How many of us know, know that? How many of us have read the Bible and have not understood it? We don't want to understand, but it's very clear. The Bible is so simple and so direct and so clear but what happens is that the devil comes and he throws doubt with what we know to be true. And it's the same today. The day that Adam and Eve ate from the tree of the, of the knowledge of good and evil, the Bible says they died. And you know what? The Bible is very clear that all men will die. Two things happened in the Garden of Eden that day. There was a physical separation. There was the breaking of the relationship between God's creation, all of God's creation including man and woman and God. Things changed completely. And God had told them, do not eat from this because when the day that you eat of it, things will change. You will die. You will die because God, who is the source of life, will be separate from you, spiritual death. But also, you will ultimately, physically die, where you will meet God for judgment. So death is there as a gateway to meet with God again. We are talking about it this morning. All of us will die. Psalm 89 and the verse 49. 
Can someone read that? Psalm 89 and the verse 49. Someone can also open Ecclesiastes 7 and the verse 2. Psalm 89 and the verse 49. Psalm 89 verse 49. <coughs> oh Lord, where is your former great Lord? Put in your fulfillment you swear to David. Okay. Psalm 89 verse 48. Sorry, Psalm 89 verse 48. Sorry. Psalm 89 verse 48. Yes, yes, sorry. No one can live forever. All the night. No one can escape the power of the grave. Amen. Is it very clear? Psalm 89 and the verse 48. What man can live and not see death, or save himself from the power of the grave? Ecclesiastes 7 and the verse 2. Ecclesiastes 7 and the verse 2. It is better to go to the house of mourning than to go to the house of fasting. For death is the destiny of every man. Okay. The living should take this to heart. Hallelujah. Amen. What is it? The destiny of all people is what? Yes. Death. This is what happened in the Old Testament. God made a way for us, for people to relate to Him through sacrifices. Ecclesiastes 7. So, when there was disobedience, there was death. And so it is today. Religion is a means by which all people want to reach out to God. There is no person, there is no human being in the world who has no religion. Including those who don't believe that there is a God. Death came to the world through one person. The Bible says in Romans 6. Through who? Okay. By disobedient, we all die. And by disobeying, the wages, the fruit, the consequences of sin and disobedience, the Bible says, is what? Is death. And that's why the Bible says all have sinned and have fallen short of the glory of God. All have sinned. We are conceived and born in sin. <coughs> By the fact that we are part of the human kind or the human race, as people will say. You are conceived in sin, you are born in sin, and you die in sin. That is your verdict. That's why I like the song that we sang before. Every person who is born of a woman is condemned to death. Physical death and spiritual death. Separation from God. <coughs> Because of disobedience. God said to Adam and to Eve, He said, the day that you eat, you will die. And the consequences of that follows all 
the generations of Adam. All people who are descendants of Adam. You know that all of us come from Adam, don't you? Black, white, yellow, whatever. Do you know that it was a Swedish scientist who gave us the colors of our skin? He was researching the skulls of people when Europeans began to travel and go to the Far East and go to the New World. That's how they graded people according to grades, taking the white or white, taking the European color as a model. And so they gave the Europeans white. White meaning they were pure, and they were the most beautiful. Because this anthropologist studied the skull of a woman, and she found how perfect it was, and compared that skull with the skull of everyone. So the darker you get, the less human you are. <laughs> and then they came to what we call the Negro, the nigger. Yeah, it's just true. And he said they are black and they are evil. <laughs> oh, it's, it's, it's true. And today we have those distinctions still existing because it came from scientific research which was based on nothing but prejudice. But human beings are one. Genetics have proven today that there is no difference between a Filipino a person who is from the Philippines, from, from the province of the Philippines, and someone who lives in the village in Africa, you might get the same DNA or blood group. They might look different, but you can use the organs of one person in Africa, in the village of Africa, to save a person living in the province of the Philippines or China. Because all human beings have one ancestor. Times have changed. Environmental changes have made us who we are today. I won't go into that because I am not a scientist. But the truth of the matter is that all human beings have one thing in common. They have a soul, they have a spirit, and they have a body. And they are curious to know God. And they have one verdict. They are born and they die. There is no country in the world where you will go and not see a grave. Except those who eat others, each other. <laughs> like in the Pacific somewhere. But you know what? Human beings die. Animals die. Plants die. Even the earth now is dying. Things are depleting. Oil can deplete. Gas can deplete. You see, there is a beginning to things and there will be an end to things. That is before Jesus came. I was reading a story Sorry, where it's a story of a slave woman. You know, in the olden times, even in Roman times, a slave was not a person. A slave was property of somebody. A slave could not inherit. A slave was property. Although a slave was a human being, a slave was not considered as a person. He had no person before the law. And so in America, there was this slave woman. Sorry, can I get some water? Thank you. There was this slave woman who, because of her beauty, she was kept as a sex slave by her master. And she, and she had three children out of this relationship with her master. And what she did was, because she did not want her children,
to go through her experience, she wrote that she wanted to kill her children. Because she said, I love my children so much that I don't want them to go through what I went through. Now, for you and me, that sounds like, wow, how can you love your child by killing your child? But think about it. And she killed her child. She tried to, she, she cut the throat of one of them, she had to beat the other one. And they tried to judge her. They sent her to court. But she was not a human being. Before the law, a slave, a black slave, at that time in the south of America, was the person. He had no personality. So you cannot judge that he murdered or she murdered someone. Because she's property herself. And her children are property. But they have to punish her for killing. And so, what they said was, they charged her with theft. That's a very interesting reading I was reading, you know? Because, and they charged her for stealing another property and destroying that property. <coughs> Apart from the fact that no property can stand before the law and be judged. You can't judge a house or a company because they have no personality. Uh, they have got a fictional personality. But that's the story here. I'm just thinking here in my mind. Mm -hmm. But they judged her and they killed her. And I was thinking, is it not what God did for us? We had by our own choice given ourselves over, of course not us, to disobedience. But Jesus, God, sent his own son to replace all humankind. Now, through the death of this of this child, it actually changed the law in the south of America. A slave somehow got a personality because they had to stand trial. And Paul writes in Romans, he says, all of us human beings are objects of God's wrath and judgment. Huh? The wages of sin is death. That is condemnation. All of us cannot see God unless God made the way. So God himself chose Israel. <coughs> he called Abraham. And out of Abraham, he promised a seed and a people through whom God will teach the whole world how to be saved and how to be redeemed. Out of his own love and his compassion. And the whole Bible from Genesis to Revelation it's a story of this revelation, of this salvation story. And that is why people who don't read the Bible will never understand the history of salvation. Mm -hmm. Because it is a narrative of what God has done with people until he himself intervened out of love. God has always loved the world. There was no point in time that God hated the world. There are some people who think that God made the world and he forgot about the world. Sometimes I feel that way. And sometimes you feel that way too. If you, if you pray and you don't hear anything, you say, God, but, but where are you? Why did you 
let these things happen to us. Don't you care enough? Don't you... Are you not loving God? But God had to go by His Word. God never contradicts His Word. Because we sin, we die. Remember in the book of Deuteronomy how God promised the children of Israel. In Exodus you see it. In Leviticus you see it. In Deuteronomy you see it. He says to them, I have put before you today two choices. Or one choice. I have put before you life and prosperity, death and destruction. Now choose life. And the way you choose life is by following my commandments. The way you choose prosperity is by obeying my word. The day that you don't obey my word, the day that you get yourself being deceived into living something else, from that day you have chosen death and destruction. So the whole Bible is a story culminating on the cross. And that is why the Apostle Paul says to us in 2 Corinthians, If Jesus is not risen from the dead, then our faith is useless. Because there is no salvation. I think that what Jimmy said this morning is absolutely right. I think that today I was there when the bishop came. Actually, I got the bread from the bishop. Because he gave everybody bread. And I was the one who took the bread from the bishop. The idea that all religions lead to God is a lie. All religions are a means through which people want to find God. But all religions do not lead to God. The way to God is Jesus Christ our Lord. Mm -hmm. And Jesus said it this way in John 14. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one can come to the Father except by me. You can venerate statues. You can venerate the saints. You can see miracles. You can give your life to be killed for someone else if you do not believe in Jesus as your Lord and Savior. If you do not believe that he died and that he rose again the third day for the forgiveness of sin, you are doomed to die. Because it's the same thing. And in Acts chapter 4, verse 12, the Bible is clear. There is no name under the sun or beneath the earth or in heaven that man can be saved except the name Jesus. Do you know what a privilege you have and I have? That is why that song, that hymn that we sang is so powerful. All people die because all people have to give an account of what they have done in their life. Or, but Jesus overcame death. What death? Physical death? No. Jesus overcame both physical death and spiritual death. 
Because the Bible tells us that when Jesus rose from the dead, he received the authority mm. to become Lord. Mm. By which, at the mention of the name of Jesus, every knee will bow mm. and every tongue will confess mm. that he is Lord to the glory of God the Father of Philippians. So you see, Jesus overcame physical death, but he had to die. Because death is a curse. Physical death is a curse. It is a result of sin. We were not meant to die. <coughs> but we die because of disobedience and sin. And so for us to be redeemed, for us to be bought back, for us to be ransomed, from the hands of Satan through whom we sought ourselves to become masters, Jesus had to conquer physical death. He died. And that is the truth of the gospel. Do you know that Islam denies the death of Jesus? Jesus in the Quran did not die. He was so powerful a prophet. A Muslim does not believe, believe that Jesus is a prophet. In fact, the Quran believes, writes, that Jesus is the Son of God. But so are you mm -hmm. the Son of God. The Quran believes that Jesus is the Word of God and that Jesus had no father. But he was born by the Holy Spirit to a virgin Mary. It is in the Quran. Jesus is a special prophet. But he did not die. It was Judas. Who appeared to be like Jesus. Jesus went to heaven. Body and soul. Do you remember a story like that? In the Roman Catholic Church, the same lie has been perpetuated using Mary. Mary died. She did not go to heaven, body and soul. No human being born by a woman will go to heaven without death. Not even Christ. So this whole story that Mary went to heaven and didn't see death and that she still appears to people only in France and Spain and the Philippines maybe and Gozo Africa no 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 the Middle East no no they are not people who believe that but Mary only, only appears in countries which are Catholic do you notice that Mary never appeared in Ghana she never appeared in Nigeria. She never appeared in Libya. Who needs God most? Mm. 